I made up a word called filmanthropy. I believe in that very much, that you want to make movies, of course you want them to sell tickets or be bought by a network and get good ratings, but you'd like the film to have a higher calling, shine a light on a tough subject, activate charitable giving. And with the cost of production coming down, more and more movies would be made. People would be making movies and a new generation would be self-expressing by making films. And so we launched Snag Films. I, I, I made a movie that won all awards, won an Emmy Award, and yeah. um, called Dang King. Uh, the, ultimate, um, the ultimate filmanthropy project, because who wants to see a Chinese Holocaust film with subtitles? And it won all these awards, and someone bought it and said, we're going to show it Christmas week in two theaters in Manhattan. I remember thinking, two theaters in Manhattan Christmas week? Are you crazy? Have you seen the movie? I mean, <laughs> who would go see a Chinese Holocaust movie with subtitles Christmas week? What, why would you do that? And they said, well, there's 8,000 movie theaters in North America and 30,000 screens. And 500 of those 30,000 screens are dedicated to show documentary films and independent films. Now, I've grown up in a world where your definition of scale has changed dramatically. We'll get a million people online, we'll get 10 million people online, we'll get 100 million people online, we'll get a billion people online, there's now 2.3 billion people online. And you get two screens. And they're talking about 500 screens that will show these films. So I said, we can fix that. So we launched Snag, and it's four years old. We now have 8,500 films on our library. We have 340,000 virtual movie theaters open. We're streaming 40, 50 million films a month. We're on 160. 40, 50 million a month yeah. films in, in their entirety? People are actually seeing Point, The average viewing now is 27 minutes. We, we have 167 distribution deals with every cable, network, direct TV, Amazon, Apple. We don't have a great one with Facebook, um, which we should because Facebook early on was double bottom line business. Um, but my point is that very quickly, we took liberal arts, philanthropy, technology, and built a huge platform that's basically now being mentioned like Netflix and Hulu. And we're supporting about 500 charities. Oh, um, from Snag Films? Or, or? Yeah, through Snag Films. This is National Autism Month. Just as I left, we had put up a movie called Loving Lampost, which is a very, very important film about a young man with autism and it's his family's battles with it. And when you watch the film, it's a really high, highly produced film that had nowhere else to go. It was a, it's a wonderful movie. Nobody bought it. HBO didn't buy it because they are linear. They don't have the bandwidth to show these kinds of movies. National Geographic didn't buy Where's this movie going to be seen? And so we put it up on Snag. And now people associated with the charity will watch it, they'll snag it, they'll put it into their Facebook feed, they'll retweet it. The society itself will email it to their three or four million name database. And I think that movie in the first week will be seen probably three, four hundred thousand times. And then you can click and give to the cause. And so that's another example of a mashup using film and technology and philanthropy to create kind of a new media life form. And, you know, as an investor, I was the founder, I'm the largest shareholder in it. Comcast is also an investor in it. We have NEA, one of the biggest venture capital companies. It's a real business, but we're doing something really socially responsible, and it's fantastic for filmmakers. And those are the kinds of businesses that I think next generation are going to create all of the value.